Hi, welcome to this video, first of many, I hope. I want to talk about the Sinstrom Deluge and in particular the sampling capabilities and workflow behind the machine. Uh, the Sinstrom is a relatively new piece of kit. Uh, it's been developed by guys uh, at Sinstrom Rowan in particular, um, and it's a synth module, a sequencer, a sampler. The sequencer will control external MIDI and external CV and gate, so you can plug it into modular kit. Um, and the way it's been put together is really clearly and well thought out. Uh, I've had this for about a month. I found it really simple to get my head around the basics and start working with it straight away. The reason I bought it was because I wanted to look at a different way of working. I've always worked on Logic. Uh, Cubase, uh, before that, you know, with Akai samplers on Ataris, that's always been my thing. And I've not really come out of the box and worked with things like the Octatrack or this that much. And I thought it would be a good way of uh, approaching songwriting or backing track creation in, in a different way, really, and maybe force myself into a different way of thinking. So, um, Let's take a look. There are three main ways of getting sounds into the deluge. There's uh, recording into the system, which we'll have a look in a minute. There is copying stuff onto the flash card that sits in there. And there's also resampling. Uh, resampling is where you've created a pattern on here, and then you can losslessly re-record the output of the pattern and create a new sample. So just back to basics, let's look at the flashcard first. There's been a few video videos about this already, uh, but in case my workflow is slightly different or they're not that clear, uh, I'll take you back to the basics. This is, as it comes out of the box, just with a couple of folders worth of samples already copied onto the system just from, uh, from my Mac. So as it comes, you switch it on. It's set up as a synth. Uh, if you want to create a beat, a drum kit or whatever, hit kit um, and you'll be faced with the kind of standard 808 samples that come with it. What we'll do is we'll start a new kit from scratch. So you hold down shift, press kit. It empties out these pads, which are basically the instrument pads, and it drops you into the uh, memory card, the flash card, uh, with sounds ready to load. So if you scroll, through those sounds, whatever you choose from there will be loaded into that pad. Now it's sitting somewhere in the 808 standard kit at the moment. If you come back out of here, I can find uh, one of the folders I've added. I've added a folder called Lo-Fi, and in there I've got a whole bunch of stuff. So drums, loops, or one shots. In there, claps, cymbals, hi-hat, kicks. So we can find a kick. Hit that, and we're already now sampling different kicks. And it forces you really to um, to listen rather than to look at lists of file names, because obviously the display is pretty small. You can see it's easy to navigate. Um, I would suggest if you're creating folders or sounds, you put the important bit of the name up the beginning. Don't create a folder called uh, my most favorite wonderful 100 kick drums, because all you'll see is my most favorite, and you won't know they're kick drums. But in general, um, it's not as bad as you would think navigating something on a display this side. And personally, uh, I actually found things like the Octatrack display quite confusing to look at. Um, and it's refreshing to come back to something where you're, you're forced to listen, really. Um, um, and, and think a little bit more carefully about what's going on. So find a kick drum. Uh, pretty much anything will will do, I guess. But let's see if we can find something a bit meaty, that one. Now, that's now assigned that to... Let me just turn on my headphones a bit. There you go. To that pad. And we're ready for a snare drum. So again, I can hold that pad down, hit load. I'm still in the kick drum folder. So I can come back out. I've got a snare drum folder. And now we're looking through snare drums. Exactly the same deal. That one sounds all right. Great, already done. So we'll just add a couple of hi-hats, uh, a shaker maybe, um, and then we'll go on and create a very quick pattern with this, show you how the whole thing sits together. So we've got a kick and a snare. Let's quickly do the same thing with a hi-hat. So come back out, there should be a hi-hat folder here, so into there. There's a closed hat. Let's find an open hat. 
that one will do. Now, one thing, obviously, with the, the hi-hats, you shouldn't really have an open hi-hat and a closed hi-hat playing at the same time. So you can literally go to the polyphony and there are shortcuts all over these pads. Think of these pads like your screen, but nothing here if you can't remember it or you can't read the little overlays or if they've been added in new versions of the software isn't available by going into the menu and diving through. Uh, but in general, I found that I don't use everything. I use my old faithful settings and so forth. And I remember where they are. Polyphony happens to be this kit. It's got polyphony written underneath it. So all I go is shift polyphony and it's set to auto for the snare. So, <coughs> excuse me. So we'll come back and we'll check this closed hi-hat polyphony. We're going to set it to choke. And then we're going to go to open hi-hat, do the same thing, set it to choke. Anything allocated with choke, We'll choke each other off so that basically open hats and closed hats won't happen at the same time. So lastly, I'm just going to quickly add a shaker. Come back out of there. Uh, percussion, hopefully there's a... That one. There you go. So very simple drum kit. Let's come together. Uh, let's just slow this thing down a little bit. Uh, and across here now, in our track, you've basically got uh, a method of, of of writing these 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 sounds into into a grid. So here we go: kicks, snares, hi hats, Now this hi hat is a bit loud overall. If I hold it, make sure that pad's selected. I have the volume setting up here, so I can just turn the overall volume down. But also, there are velocity settings, like if you're using a keyboard, if you hit the key hard or soft, and I can select any button and simply turning that knob, you can hear it drops down. For now, I'm just going to keep it at 64, which is kind of the midpoint. Everything defaults to the midpoint. I'm going to add a hi-hat, open, and I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. Okay. Now, I kind of want to put a shaker in here as well. But what I don't want to do is have that shaker at a constant velocity all the way through. And that would mean having to hold down each pad and then adjusting all the various kind of levels of it. So what I can do is I can zoom in on this area and go from 16s, because we've got 16 pads, all the way to 32 to 64. And we're just now looking at the first two beats of this, of our whole section. We can scroll through the rest, but this is the first two. So now if I put my shaker here, whoops, not my open hi-hat, my shaker. I was back to where I was. If I switch on cross screen, it means anything I put in this screen will be copied across to the other screen. So that's now copied across. And all I need to do now, if I want to give this a bit of a, a groove in terms of velocities, is play around and they will be copied through at, throughout the whole pattern. So I want that first one loud, this one quiet, the third one a little bit quieter than the first one and the last one even lower. So it's pushing a little bit more. And then I can come back and I can see my whole part. It's put these shakers across the whole thing. Perfect. I can add a bit of swing, literally hold shift down. That's cool. There's a reverse swing. Never really heard reverse swing up until I found that function. But it's obviously pushing things back rather than delaying them very slightly. Let's leave it at 59. So there's my basic track. Hit the song key and I've got track one of my entire song, which is that drum track. Go in there, I can mute anything that I want off the whole thing. And we're back again. Uh, I can do whatever I want after that. I can sample a loop. I can put in, say, a MIDI track. I can add a synth track. If I hit here, that gives me the next track to work on. I've got the synth. So if I really want to...
whatever we want. Not particularly inspiring, I know, so we can mute that out. One good thing about this is when you mute it, it waits for the end of the of the bar. Unless I press shift and then it will uh, cut the bar off quite happily. So let's stop that. We've got, um, we can delete this. If I just hold here and I hit delete, great. I'm going to save this song. So I literally hit save. I'm going to save it into song number naught because I haven't got any songs on here yet. I can also save this kit as a separate kit. If I hit save uh, here, it's now flashing the kit and it's asking me if I want to save it as number 52. I think there's probably some more kits around in here from the default settings, but for now I'm just going to save it as 50 because I can remember 50 a bit easier than any other number, I think. So back there, so we've saved a kit, we can call that into other songs, and we've saved the song itself, which saves all the sounds and everything with it. So we're pretty good loading samples in from the RAM card. Um, if you want to load different kinds of samples in there, uh, let's have a look. Let me give it another track, make it a kit track again, which is really a sample track, and I'll load in something here, I think, with any luck within this lo-fi, we might have some loops of some kind effects. Atmos, let's have a look. Atmos. Hmm, try something else, come back into here. Uh, melodic, here we go. Melodic arpeggio, bass, guitar, keys, leads, lo-fi. There you go, that'll do. I'll load that into this part. If I put the first beat in, it fills the whole part here with that sound because it knows the sound is longer than a one bar phrase. Kind of works. There's no time stretching going on here. It's just literally playing it through. That hi-hat still sounds a little bit loud to me, so I'm just gonna take it. Might be the shaker actually, but I'm gonna take it down. Hit volume here. This top knob becomes volume. Do it the same with this one. Incidentally, if you want to pick one of these without it um, actually making a noise, like if you're live, you can select them just by holding the shift down. Okay, that's kind of cool. Go back into the song. Just shows you that you don't have to load uh, simple drum sounds into the kit settings. So that's the basics of uh, stuff you've already got in there. You can load up whatever you want onto the flash drive. That's nothing particularly special, but it is a nice, easy workflow and an easy way of working with stuff. What we can do now, though, is take a look at how to sample something in there and then work with the sounds once it's been recorded. The Deluge has uh, a line in, which is a stereo jack, uh, like this one, uh, that can take stereo samples. You can also sample just the left channel or just the right channel. But also, not just only with that, uh, you can use the line in as a, a source of audio in the same way that you've got internal oscillators or samples. You can literally play something into there and then play it in real time with the pads or change the echo and the reverb and so forth. So you just need to be a little bit careful when you're sampling because that socket on the back isn't just for sampling in. So the first thing to do is to just take a look at the way that works um, as a sound source. So I'm just going to switch off the two tracks that uh, I've got here, if we go back and take a look. So I'll switch off these two tracks, we'll add another one, and we'll make it a synth sound. But we'll initialize the synth, so it's a brand new synth. It starts off with like a, a square wave noise. In order to hear the line in through this instrument, um, I'm going to change the type of this from a square wave all the way through, saw, sine, triangle, sample. You have in left, in right, and in left and right. So that's our stereo source. So nothing is coming out of here at the moment because my phone isn't playing anything. So we'll literally go in and we'll play something. And again, nothing is coming out simply because I wasn't holding a pad down. So hopefully you can hear that. So that is in real time playing the audio that's coming out of my phone. Which 
is pretty cool. Now, if I'm going to sample rather than play it as an instrument, you can only hear the input when you're actually recording. So one trick you can do is literally make a synth sound like this with the source, um, put a note that runs all the way through the pattern, um, and then have that running in the background. Then you can hear the input. You'll see what I mean in a second when I do it. So I'm going to make... One single, there you go, sorry, hold that down, go to there, that plays a note all the way through my pattern. So if I go back into the song mode, unmute everything, I'll leave that uh, the synth bassy thing that I did, and the atmospheric noise. So I've now got my drum loop running, and I've got my iPhone running, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Now, if I want to sample, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another track. I'm going to make it a kit track. I'm going to initialize the kit track so it's empty. And so we're back at that stage where it's asking us what sound from disk do you want to load into this pad? So we're back to the audition mode. But instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record. So let's say hit play. In the background, it's playing the synth part that I added so I can hear what's coming out of my phone and when I'm ready all I need to do is hit record so it's recording stopped recording and we're done so there is the sample. If I want to mess with the start and the end points, I'll do this with a loop in a, in a minute as well, so you can actually see something a little bit more, a little less pointless. That's the start point. That's the end point. So now um, I can do whatever I want with this. I can go back into the song mode um, and I can add it quite happily into these parts as well. So let's have uh, that length. When you hold down a pad, you hit the end for the length of the, of the note that you want. So let me just do one of those, one of those. Let's make this three as well. Three as well, sorry, three as well. And three as well. Now, if I want to get a more stuttered effect on this, um, I can zoom in like I showed you before. So we can go to 64th, we can switch on cross screen, and we can literally put very short notes in. Hopefully you can hear that. And then come back out to 16s. That kind of stuff. So we've literally, we've sampled something, we've messed around with it. It's not the mo world's most exciting sound in the world. So <laughs> probably the next best thing is to, is to find a loop. Do the same principle, but I'll find some kind of loop on my phone and we'll sample that and we'll look at time stretching and um, actually locking it to the groove that we've already got. So let me find on, uh, on my phone something a little bit more useful to sample in terms of a loop. Um, but we'll use the same principle. So if we go back and look here, I'm in my song mode. I'm going to leave in the track that was the instrument track that allowed me to hear the, the inputs that were coming in. So with any luck, if I press play, there you go. On my phone, I've just found a loop. And we can hear it and we get ready to sample it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create same principle, a new track, kit track, initialize that kit track and get ready to record it. So we're ready to record. I'm going to press play on the deluge so I can hear what's going on. And I'm going to play my loop and I'm just going to sample one bar of it. So here's a first bar. Let me take this one next. Okay, so I've got a very, very short stretch. So that's a pretty good loop. It's obviously got a bit on the beginning 
and a bit on the end, as you'd expect from kind of recording in that way. So I need to set the start and the end points right, get my loop, and then I can start messing with it. So first thing I do, look at the start point or the end point. I always go to the end point first, because then you don't have to wait all the way through for this loop to work out whether you've got the end point right. So move the start point to the end. It's the second of those kick drums that I want. The second kick drum is actually the start of the next bar. So I've moved my start point. I'm going to go to my end point and I'm going to bring it back. And I'm going to move it till we lose that second, the second kick drum. That'll do. Then I can go back to my start point. I can whiz it all the way to the beginning of the track, of the sample rather. And I need to catch that first kick drum. Now you can hear I've lost the transient. So I can so I get the click of that kick drum. So, so far, so good. I've, uh, I've taken a sample, I've set the start point, I've set the end point. This is pretty familiar to anyone who's worked with a sampler before. Uh, no big deal. You can't see a waveform, but, you know, I mean, it's, it works for me. You're just using your ears and actually forcing you into using your ears is no bad thing as far as I'm concerned because I've relied on uh, waveforms and what my eyes tell me uh, far too much in the past. So, let's go back. Here's my sample. Now, at the moment, that sample is just playing while I hold the pad down. So I can go in and I can set with this button its behavior. Cut means it cuts off when I let go of the pad. Once means it plays all the way through. Loop means it loops around. Stretch means that it will stretch to fill our bar. So I'm going to select stretch. Sounds exactly the same at the moment. And I'm going to record into my pads by simply hitting one beat. It's filled the whole bar with my sound. And you can hear it's just slowed down a little bit because my tempo is 108. I can speed it up. Sounds like I got the start and the end point pretty good actually, but we'll see. So back in my song, I can turn off the two tracks that uh, I had running just then, which was called one loop. I'm going to go in and I'm going to mute in my drum tracks that I had everything by the kick drum. And then we'll go back into the song and we'll unmute those drums. So I'm going to compare the program drums I did with the sample. I think I got pretty good at that one. I'm going to put a kick drum to match. Whoops, we've got cross screen on just then. So I'm replicating my loop just for the hell of it. And clearly I've got my levels all over the shop. Part of that is, if I go back into song, this note that I added here is it's only on 64. So the velocity of that note was only 64, so it's half the volume. I can turn it up not put it all the way up to the top and that will now play louder and I may well be distorting the video at the moment so we'll pull it down go back into my song she doesn't sound half bad I'm going to go in and uh, I'm going to turn down this track here so oops So I'm going to affect the entire track and pull the volume down. Sounds a little bit better. You can also do all the effects and stuff that you would ex expect. Um, there's a filter, resonance. 
Now, version two of the software, which we're not running, is meant to have some awesome stuff, some real nice analog uh, emulations and so forth. So this is, this is really worth looking at it for that. But at the moment, literally, I'm just teaching, showing you the basics about what the samples can do. Go back to, into our song, unmute the loop. I think we're pretty good. Maybe the start point of the loop may be a little bit out. Um, we can just experiment in real time. Hmm. Horses for courses, really. However you want that feel to go. Uh, back into the song and we're good to go. Whoops, save that. Back into the song and we're good to go. So that is the basics on sampling. The other thing you can do here um, is slice. The slice is fairly basic, but again, actually, so is it on an octa track. The thing with slicing is um, it will basically chop you into 16, 32, 64 bits from the beginning to the end of the sample. But with our sample that we've got, if we go in and take a look at it, uh, not my baseline. Let's go and have a closer look into the sample page. Uh, and we're muted, I think, at the moment. So let's unmute that. There you go. Although we've chopped it to be a single time stretch sample to fit the whole thing, uh, we still internally have the beginning and the end. So if I load it in and tell it to slice, it's going to slice it wrong. I can't actually at the moment go in and slice this as it stands. What I need to do is truncate this sample so it's a, it's a bar long. There is no current truncate function as a switch on here, as a button. But what you can do is resample it, which is really cool. So if I, um, let's just put it at 120 BPM for now. Anything that's playing out of here, and at the moment, all I want is my loop, which is here, um, will be resampled. So there's my loop. If I hit record and play, it will start resampling the output at the beginning of this pattern, synchronized. And whilst this pattern is playing, if I hit record and play again, it will stop exactly on the end. So you do have almost like a triggered function. So it's only a short pattern, so it'll be a quick thing to do, but watch what happens. I hold record and play, and then I do it again. It has now resampled that sound. So if I go back and create another kit, Hold kit down like this, brand new kit. We're back in where we were. What it's done is it's created a folder on the drive called resample. And there is my truncated loop. Uh, there's only one thing in there at the moment because I started with pretty much a fresh deluge, deluge, deluge to quote someone else on, uh, on YouTube that I heard. Um, and there it is. So if I select it, there you go. And I can record, do you know, do exactly what I did before, but I'm dealing with a sample that's been truncated. So now I've basically resampled my loop. It wasn't that hard. It was only really a couple of button presses, right? Um, I can go and look into slicing it. So uh, really simple again. I'm going to start with a brand new uh, song this time and a new kit just so that it's easy enough to see what's going on. So here's a new one. Here's our synth sound. Going to change it to kit. We're going to open a new kit and I'm going to go and find the resample folder, which is up here. There's our truncated ready to go loop that we resampled. And then instead of loading it, all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift down. It says slice. I'm just going to cut it into eight slices for now. Let's map them all out. Whoa. There you go. Because I'm running on a, obviously a 16 bar phrase with eight slices. My turnaround sounds pretty bad there. So maybe what we'll do is we'll try that. Let's 
Let's zoom in to 30 seconds. And let's cut down. You see what I'm doing here? I'm literally just chopping it down to half a bar. Anyway, anyway all, sorts all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff. stuff. We can look at that another time. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that was of vague interest to some people. If you want me to go into more depth about anything, um, mail me or stick a comment in there. Uh, this is the first video I've done, so be gentle. And uh, there's a load more, actually. Um, I want to talk about spring reverbs. Make your own spring reverbs. I want to talk about modular. There's a really decent modular sitting behind there. Uh, external effects. There's a, a tape machine woo, up there uh, that I'm actually using as an echo. All sorts of crazy stuff. So anyway. Thanks for watching. See you again soon, I hope.